for stopping by. He was uh, wildly informative and is building a nice business here in Rhode Island. Um, next up is Mike DBAs, Director of Administration, Administration for the State of Rhode Island. And uh, we've known each other for uh, way too long. Uh, worked together back in the Almond administration. That was right. somewhere around the Truman or Coolidge administration. <laughs> I get them all mixed up. Uh, T.F. Green was just building his airport or something like that back then. Um, but you're you're running the fiscal uh, business of the state of Rhode Island. Uh, how are we doing? I think we're doing very well uh, with uh, with Governor Raimondo's leadership uh, building the economy. The budget is is tight, like in many states. Um, so we, we did have uh, a challenging time uh, putting the budget together, but I think uh, the governor uh, put ahead her priorities in the, in the right in the right way. So we're, we're pleased with the budget proposal we put in. So in the olden days, when we used to work, if you had low unemployment and a good stock market, you had huge budget surpluses. It was almost a guarantee. And now, and this isn't just true in Rhode Island, this is across the country. What is the disconnect now between the economic performance of the country with low, low unemployment and uh, uh, you know a stock market that doesn't stop growing, it seems like, and we're running shortfalls. What, what, what was the change? Well, was it tax policy? We're not entirely sure. First of all, our revenues are growing. They're just not as growing as fast as our expenditures. Uh, the uncertainty in Washington and the federal tax changes there may have had something to do with it, and people delaying taking profits or taking income. We've also had a shift in, um, in, for sales tax, a shift in what people spend on. So people are spending less on those things that are taxed, like, like clothing and other tangible products, and more on uh, experiences and travel. So that's, that's part of it as well. So we need to buy more stuff. We have to, we have to buy more <laughs> so stuff. So Governor Raimondo is buy stuff, don't travel, <laughs> right? Except for that might hurt TF Green with all these new airlines we have. So we've got to figure this all out yeah, together. Yeah, we have, we have been able to capture some of the internet sales. So that yeah. was done last year, and that's actually worked fairly well. Um, talk a little bit about this budget. We're, we're 19, we're scheduled for 200 million, 202, 203 hundred uh, uh, million in the hole. Uh, we've got a budget that's got um, a few complex new revenue streams. One of them is dependent on uh, Chris Christie's lawsuit against the N uh, NCAA uh, to allow states to have sports betting. And all the states are waiting with bated breath to be able to tee up and launch these uh, new forms of gaming. Uh, does that make you a little nervous as the director of administration that we're betting or functionally betting on a Supreme Court decision? Well, I think we made a we made a good uh, a good bet on that. But <laughs> we uh, 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 there's a there's a good likelihood that that lawsuit, the Supreme Court case, will go in our favor. That states will, will be allowed to engage in sports betting. Four states have already passed legislation, and we want to get ahead of the game. Of course, it is contingent on that Supreme Court case going our way. But and that's looking we, like May, June is yes, usually when they come yes. back. Yes, and so uh, uh, the governor felt that uh, that item, which was a, which was about twenty three million, was worth uh, putting in the budget, given uh, the alternatives of of, uh, of cutting uh, benefits or raising taxes. That uh, that we think it's that we think it's a reasonable thing to do. And if the Supreme Court and Supreme Courts often uh, surprise. Um, uh, what is there a contingency plan? Well, well, we will have to, you know, the budget never comes out the way it goes in, and we'll have to work with the General Assembly. Revenue is up uh, a little bit. Uh, they're up about $17 million, uh, this year. That, yeah, we have to be summer. cautiously optimistic because we're not sure whether that's just a timing thing, but hopefully if, if that, if that uh, continues to progress that way, we'll have a little bit more breathing room. But, but we will work with the General Assembly to to find ways, you know, in a nine billion dollar budget to cover that that particular item. Uh, we talked to the Tax Foundation a week or so ago about which states were going to be winners and losers under the new federal tax reform, and they really couldn't make a determination on Rhode Island. Thought it actually might have an adverse effect. There's obviously winners and losers within the population. Uh, those who are wealthy uh, take the biggest hit. Those who have uh, do deductibility. Um, and uh, uh, that makes it a little more complicated, I assume. Yeah, I think it remains to be seen how it's going to affect us. Some of it depends on whether corporations or more affluent who get some of these tax benefits 
uh, whether they invest and or deliver benefits to their workers. So there, there is a potential. I mean, Rhode Island uh, will uh, be disadvantaged a bit with the state and local uh, tax deduction. Um, so, you know, it, 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 it is, it is uh, you know, a work in progress. Uh, full unemployment or near full unemployment, it's bouncing around a little bit. Uh, according to uh, DLT, in the last five months, we're down just a tad. Uh, Kate had uh, Stephen Pryor on Thursday and uh, cited those numbers, and Stephen was all upset that those were the numbers and et cetera, but you know Stephen, and the arms were flailing and all that sort of stuff. Um, how, is there a way to build um, you know, a more robust employment? You know, we're just, Benny's was on the, uh, they, they announced they were closing on a Friday. Uh, the Bromberg, Arnold Bromberg was on Monday and he said, listen, you know, I've been at it for 50 years when we had three stores, there were a million Rhode Islanders. We had 31 stores, most of them in Rhode Island, and we have a million Rhode Islanders. Is there a way, you know, from a policy standpoint that we can start growing the economy, growing the population? Uh, you know, is there any thought to those types of issues when you're looking at kind of the macro trends and what Rhode Island can do to kind of incent folks to move here, build their businesses here, beyond <coughs> the Johnson & Johnsons and the GEs? Uh, is there any thought to those things? Yeah, I think that's what the governor's trying to do, is create uh, the best possible climate for companies to grow and locate here. We, um, you know, the, the, you mentioned Benny's. I mean, retail is changing. We are not going to have the number of jobs in that, uh, in that sector. It was always a locally based sector in the first place. Uh, we need to keep bringing jobs that are, um, you know, higher tech, higher knowledge, uh, built on, uh, as the governor talks about, uh, workers who have some type of training or certificate or degree after high school. So, um, and, and, I, and I think we're seeing it happen. Uh, just, you know, just what you see going on in the city here, the number of young people uh, that you see and all those folks are, uh, they're not all students. Many of them are working in a lot right. of these companies here. Uh, obviously, Virgin Pulse hiring 300 people or a net Absolutely. couple hundred. Right. Um, uh, <laughs> The state's own technology, um, on a Saturday a few weeks ago, uh, Department of Labor and Training had a leak in the roof and it nearly wiped out their, their uh, storage of their uh, data. Um, the, uh, the information we got from your office was not clouded um, on backups and sort of, you know, old school backup system. What's the state doing to modernize its technology? Uh, we've obviously, obviously UHIP was, has been uh, uh, reported about as well, but it seems to be that there's other issues within the technology infrastructure of the state. Um, how are you addressing that? And how do you, how do you move that along quicker? Because that is a way to, to get the state more competitive. Yeah, I th I'm, I'm glad you raised it, Josh, and the governor is very focused on this. Obviously, obviously you have something that she's, she's been involved in as well in terms of managing that. Um, we in Rhode Island, like many states, have not invested in technology the way that we should. It was uh, harder for us as a small state. I think it's getting easier with more cloud-based solutions. Uh, we recently hired a new chief information officer, BJ Kumar, uh, who worked at Hasbro, and he's bringing you know uh, higher level of discipline in terms of projects. But we need to. We have some very old. You know, you talk about the some of the. Uh, the Department of Labor and Training systems, old legacy uh, systems, green screen systems, <laughs> and uh, and we need to we need to to modernize DOS space. Them. Are they yeah. DOS space? <laughs> uh, and the other part of that is that if you think about if you think about government, yeah. it's really a service and information business. So yeah, it's absolutely. it's what you know. If you think about enabling technology, that's what we need to do. And we have too many uh, of our workers who are doing routine data entry tasks. And it's jobs that they don't don't necessarily want to do. We don't need to not have them work. We need to right. just redeploy them into better places of government. Yeah, it was interesting. We were down at um, Adesia, uh, Navin Salem's company, that uh, not for profit that you know is producing amazing company eight hundred thousand uh, uh, high uh, value uh, feeding packets for the most mal malnourished uh, children in the world. And um, one robot, one robot uh, funded by Alex and Ani um, has increased their productivity by 36%. Um, and they took their 70 staff, 
<clears throat> didn't lay them off, but taught them how to become experts at operating robots and uh, advancing the entire uh, development of that production line. They are the largest international exporter in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, have you been down there? Yes, I have. It's, a, yeah. it's an amazing facility. Yeah. Um, but it's a big challenge. IT is a big, you know, we don't, we don't type, you know, usually have the resources to implement, uh, uh, you know, making some of these changes because we need all the workers yeah. on the systems we have. So it's, it's a, it is a, it's a, cha it's a challenging job. Also, government can't pick and choose what they want to put on IT. We have to right. do the services that are. You know, retailers can decide they'll do only certain product lines or right. certain things. We have to. Well, do I think that's one of the frustrations. We looked at it um, when uh, Governor Chafee was in office. He made a pronouncement after there was a significant improvement at the DMV, and uh, I think six different um, services went online. And we went and looked at the other New England states, and you know, in Massachusetts. <clears throat> it's hard to believe anyone would need to go into a DMV. There were like 32 different services that were online. And, um, you know, that saves a lot of not only efficiency in state government when those things can be online, but they save just a lot of time and energy and efficiency for people who live in Rhode Island. I mean, Absolutely. the idea to, that you have to go in for some of the most nominal things going and spend an hour or three hours or your whole work day does not seem to be a good idea to help Rhode Island's economy. Uh, and I know it costs significant money. You know, de facto, we're a technology company. Um, so, uh, you know, the more effort into that, uh, I think uh, the, the recovery is significant. And I think if we want to be a competitive state and attract advanced companies, we right. also have to look that part in state government and act like yeah. we have that technology. And also the, you know, the millennials and the newer uh, they don't citizens have patience, are right? not. They will. They will. They will. Their demands will be heard eventually. Well, if you think about the um, uh, Hispanic population, uh, vast majority are mobile-based only. So there is no desktop. There is no laptop in the home. So if they're signing up for classes at a college and they can't do it on their phone, then they can't sign up for college right. because there is no alternative to be able to do that. So uh, you know the advancements of the user's behavior is now really outstripping what our technology Absolutely. infrastructure is. So um, just kick back to the budget again. Um, uh, how's the discussions been going? Have you gotten into it with Chairman Abney yet and the House fiscal staff, or are we still a little ways from there? No, we, uh, I meet along with uh, OMB Director Jonathan Wilmer and Tom Mullane, our budget officer. We meet regularly with both House and Senate uh, chairs and fiscal staff. Uh, we, ha we have a very good working relationship. We'll usually do it a weekly, bi-weekly basis. No sharks and jets kind of situation. No, I think, I mean, a lot of our work is trying to resolve a lot of the second and third tier issues so that the principals can uh, deal. Um, I don't want to say that we don't deal with some of the bigger issues, but right. the more the more difficult and more political issues are, are left to often the principals to deal with. But there are, as you know, there are so many parts of the budget that are not actually controversial. We're all collectively trying to figure out how much things will actually cost and how much money will come in. So just uh, just ironing out those things. And so uh, it, it's a good process. And um, I think, you know, I, I expect that it will go well. In an election year, these things always get a little bit more um, <laughs> a little bit more. They're way more fun in election yeah. year, at least for us, maybe not for you. <laughs> um, the last one is, you know, uh, um, the lottery saw some real strain in the revenue numbers in many of the different categories. The only one that was up uh, off last year's uh, audit was uh, table games at Twin River. Do, you know, because if, if sports betting comes on, do we, and, and other states are going to do it, <coughs> are we a little worried that we're just robbing Peter to pay Paul? You know, at $831 million is estimated to be bet. It's got to come from somewhere. Uh, that's not all new discretionary uh, gaming revenue. Um, do, will we see more fraying on the lottery side, the more traditional lottery side? And are we a little worried that it might have an effect on Twin River and the new facility in Tiverton? Yeah, I think, I mean, this is a little out of my element. You could have the... I didn't know director, there was anything out of your element. There was director of revenue here, but we... <laughs> We're looking at, um, first of all, the lottery, you know, the lottery will continue to be somewhat challenged and the casinos 
in Rhode Island because of Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, we've actually looked at the, you know, there is some cannibalizing effect when you have sports betting, but there's also people who will go to those uh, go to those locations to do the sports betting and will also take part in some of the t table games. So there's both <laughs> sides of that. So We've looked at the New Jersey claims against it. They're a big claim and only in New Jersey what they do. They said, listen, there's $10 billion of illegal sports betting in New Jersey. We're going to capture a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, and I think we want to be, you know, we want to be, um, look, it's going to come eventually and we yeah. want to at least make sure that we have, have our share. And, you know, a time, we may be able to get ahead enough that we can get some from other states as well. So. Are you betting on the Supreme Court uh, decision yourself? I, I definitely <laughs> am, yes, thanks, John. <laughs> um, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we can get you back during the budget process. Uh, there were no I, trick questions. Math was at a minimum. It was all in English. I'd love to, I'd love to come back. <laughs> That'd so be great. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna take a one second break here at the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 